The ancestral theropod flight system is a hypothesis meant to explain the transition of forelimb movement in avian dinosaurs. This hypothesis defines the beginning of flight capabilities as the flapping-based locomotion powering anterodorsal posterior ventral wing movements. In the ancestral theropod flight system, large dorsally positioned deltoids controlled the upstroke and small ventrally positioned pectoralis controlled the downstroke. In this video, you'll see how the system changed in structure to become the modern avian flight system. Paravian dromaeosaurid dinosaurs developed flapping-based locomotion for a variety of purposes. These movements were performed using a laterally facing glenoid fossa, a laterally averted anterior edge of the acromion margin, a symmetrical furcula, airfoil shaped wings, elongated robust forelimbs, and small body sizes. Among paraves, full weight supporting organism generated flapping style flight developed not only in birds once, but independently in dromaeosaurs at least twice, and once in scansoriopterygids. Gliding capabilities were already ancestral among paraves. With Microraptor among the most primitive of the paraves, it serves to demonstrate the musculoskeletal capabilities of early flying paravians. Directional bone functional adaptations related to the habitual flight related loading of the sternum is suggested based on ventrally positioned pectoralis that powered the wing depression, a present sternum for the attachment of the pectoralis, and a greater dependence on the deltoids than the supercoid coideus to power the upstroke. These early paravians had a sternum that was fused, flat, wide, and lacked a keel. Early diverging aviales such as Archaeopteryx are defined primarily by a long bony tail and the loss of the sternum when grouped with later more derived members. Additionally, most of these bony tailed early birds possessed third and fourth wings on the hind limbs, which even supported asymmetrical feathers to form an airfoil. These early diverging avialans had a pectoralis muscle attached to a cartilaginous structure between the gastralia and the coracoids. While that alone implies weak pectoralis muscles, the humerus has an increased delta pectoral crest in Archaeopteryx that is smaller in other early aviales such as Anchiornis, inversely implying stronger flight in the absence of a sternum. Notably, specimens that preserved cartilage were not found to preserve cartilaginous plates. Some diverged members of the non-avian dromaeosaurids independently lost their sternums, notably the Truodontids. However, this group has no connection to characteristics of powered flight, and the reason for their sternum loss is unclear. It would seem that the bony-tailed aviale evolved a body plan opposite to the centralized weight of modern aves, instead spreading the weight out and supporting it with more wings and a large tail fan when gliding, but still possessed some ability in powered flight. The deltoid muscles of the bony-tailed aviale still dominated the powered upstroke, and the supercoricoideus seems to have even decreased in size compared to the non-avialan microraptor. This shows early diverged birds using the ancestral theropod flight system. One rather inhumane story shows that even modern birds are capable of using the deltoids for the upstroke when the supercoricoideus tendon is cut, despite their greater dependence on the latter. Decoupling of the wing and tail took place in early branching pygostylia as the reduction of the tail required a new posture for flight. In inheriting the ancestral theropod flight system, a study of around 600 Confucius ornithid fossils revealed a slender pectoralis associated with an unkeeled sternum. In these early pygostylia, the upstroke was still primarily performed by the deltoids, which is inferred based on the absence of the triosial canal seen in modern birds. This confirms that early pygostylian sternal keel development is linked to the migration of the supercoricoideus onto the sternum and the deepening of the pectoralis muscle. The sternum had a lesser role in the downstroke compared to modern birds, but this was compensated for with the drastically enlarged size of the delta pectoral crest, especially in Confucius Ornus. The genus Confucius Ornus serves as the first example of an upstroke enhanced flight stroke, based on the increased muscle profile of the deltoids and the supercoricoideus. This is further inferred based on the enlarged delta pectoral crest. All of this is to say that the muscles in both the upstroke and the downstroke of early pygostylian birds was very dependent on the humerus, rather than the sternum, scapula, or the coracoid like we see in modern birds. The earliest example of an incipient probotagial ligament along the leading edge of the wing is seen in Confucius Ornus, which maintains leading edge tautness to improve wing aerodynamics and minimize aeroelastic flutter. This allows researchers to infer on more prolonged flight than ancestors of Pygostylia, which is further displayed in Sapiornis, who shows an ability to utilize thermal soaring independently evolved from apes. Sapiornis is suspected to have similar upstroke capabilities to Confucius Ornus, 
but with a reduced downstroke ability. Soaring would reduce sternal loading and eventually lead to the loss of the sternum, once again independently. Soaring, however, would have meant an increased breathing requirement, and so Sapiornis had an enhanced capability for gastralial respiration, contextualized by the longest gastralia of any early diverging bird. Modern aves rely on a centralized body plan with powered flight dependent on two wings. They do this with reduced deltoid muscles and an enhanced supercord coitus and pectoralis. Musculoskeletal action is more dependent on the sternum and the coracoid than the attachments on the humerus, allowing them to keep weight centralized. Wings are kept light and the tail is drastically reduced. This is all highly derived from the ancestral theropod flight system, but it is not the only way theropod anatomy could be arranged to achieve flight. Early diverging groups of the Dromaeosauridae and Scansoriopteridae demonstrate other adaptations on the theropod body plan that led to powered flight. However, flying paravians continuously shifted during the Mesozoic to the more modern bird body plan, demonstrating powered flight to be more capable the more centralized the body mass became.